Hey everybody, it's Charles from HumbleMechanic.com. Today we're going to be replacing the thermostat, the housing, and water transfer pipe on the R32. We are replacing this due to a fault code stored in the ECM on the car, and that fault was for malfunction in cooling system. A failing thermostat is very typically the reason that this code gets stored. What's happening is the algorithm inside the ECM is seeing the car either not warm up fully or warm up too slow. While this one doesn't monitor coolant temperature on both sides of the thermostat, it does see the coolant warm up and if it's not warming up at the proper speed, it'll turn on the check engine light. A thermostat's not the only reason this fault can be stored, so be sure to check your cooling fans as well as coolant temperature sensor. But this is the most common reason for this fault. I'm installing an OEM thermostat. We're gonna be installing the metal thermostat housing and water transfer pipe or crack pipe, as people call it, from Eurowise. The coating that I put on it is simply wrinkle black engine paint. Step number one is going to be removing the battery as well as the air box and this air ducting piece here. One other thing you really need to be careful of is this connection right here. It is a composite piece and often gets very fragile with age and can break right there super easy. So be really careful. In fact, this might just be the best time to grab another one and replace it. Next, what we wanna do is remove the belly pan and the belt skirt and this undershield as well. This car's missing a belly pan, so we don't have to worry about that, but we do wanna move these other components. Go ahead and slide your catch tray underneath the vehicle. Now, before you open the cooling system, make sure your vehicle is not hot and you might wanna take the coolant reservoir cap off to relieve any pressure. And I like to remove the lower radiator hose for this job. It's gonna get the most amount of coolant out and allow us to fill it with fresh, clean coolant. Before removing the lower radiator hose, go ahead and spray it with some silicone spray. And that'll help it come off a little bit easier. Once you release the spring clip, gently pry the hose away from the radiator. You may have to rock it back and forth a little bit to get it to come off. Once you feel like you've got an adequate amount of coolant out of the system, it's time to get all of our coolant hoses off and take our thermostat housing off. Also, we're gonna leave our drip tray underneath to catch any coolant that's gonna come out because you'll probably still lose a little bit. Take our coolant hose pick, just work our way around them. There's a coolant retention tab back here. You want to make sure you take the hose out of there. I like to just bring this one up to the top side of the engine. And then finally our big hose for the upper radiator. Next we'll remove our two 5mm Allen bolts. These are both going to be these long ones here. We'll take off our tab here for the secondary air pipe, as well as this retainer on this coolant hose. And we can move this bracket we don't need to take it out. We can just move it a little bit out of the way. Next, we'll do our final bolt for our thermostat housing. It's located right about the four o'clock position. Now, if you're just doing the thermostat housing, this is going to be the part where you need to be extra careful. You need to kind of rock it back and forth because we don't want the coolant transfer pipe or crack pipe as they call it, to come out with it. We want that to stay in the car. You can reach right through here and get to your ECT connector. And then we can just move our wires to the side and pull our housing right out. All right, before we can take our water transfer pipe out, which is this pipe right here, we need to remove one hose. You can see the hose right here has a clamp on it. We need to take that clamp off. As you can see, the space is a little bit tight, so this can be a bit tricky. Something that can help considerably is to remove these wires from the loom up above. That will allow us to pull our bracket a little bit further out of the way. Before you take the hose all the way off, you're going to want to switch your drain pan because you're probably going to get some coolant coming out of the water pump side. Next, what we can do is we can gently pull and rock back and forth. Even grabbing a pair of pliers since we're replacing it anyway, 
is just fine. We don't wanna just rip it out because we have a few things still attached to it. There's a wire loom piece attached as well as our coolant hose, but this will give us a little bit more room to get that stuff off our pipe. Okay, before we install all these parts, we're going to build the thermostat housing. And of course we have to put the seals on our water transfer pipe. We just put a little bit of dielectric grease on them, slip it right over, do the same thing on the other side. The only thing we're going to be reusing from our old housing is going to be this plug. And what we have to do is we have to remove the clip. So I just take a flat blade screwdriver, put it in and twist, lets the clip come out nice and easy. And then you can just pry it right out. We will have a new seal for this. Clean that up before you install it. A little dielectric on the seal, drop it on. We'll go ahead and put it in our housing, drop our clip in, do the same thing for our new coolant temp sensor. Next, what we need to do is check the orientation of our thermostat to make sure that we put it back in correctly. The repair manual says to make sure you note the direction of installation but doesn't tell you the direction of installation. So we're gonna pull this one out and just confirm which way it goes. Okay, so we see our little dot. Here's the dot on the new one. I'm gonna actually leave that in there so that we can refer back to it if we have to. What I'm gonna actually do is compare the two and then drop a little mark just so I make 100% sure it goes back together right. We'll take our thermostat, we'll set it in, get our seal lubricated, Drop our seal in, set our housing on, install our bolts, and torque it to 10 newton meters. You want to do this kind of in stages, do one bolt a little bit at a time. One, two, and three. And finally, we'll put our seal on where it goes onto the block. All right, there we have it. Now we just need to work on the car side and get this thing installed. Before putting everything back together, you're gonna to want to clean the surface where the coolant flange and thermostat housing mount. This can simply be done with some Scotch-Brite, and if you need to, a rag with some brake clean. All right, once everything is clean, it is time to put the pipe back in. So we're gonna take our pipe, we're gonna pull our wire loom away as far as we can. When installing the pipe, it may actually help to rotate the pipe for clearance. This can be a tricky operation, so you wanna be really careful not to catch any wires or damage the seal at the end where it goes into the block. If you need to, you can reach up from the bottom and guide the pipe in a little bit easier. Now, before we install it all the way, we need to make sure we get our wiring loom as well as our coolant hose installed. Here, just give it one final push to secure the pipe inside the block. Once your pipe is in all the way and your coolant line is on, let's go ahead and put the clamp on it. And this time we'll put it in a position that'll make it a little easier to get off next time. Next, it is time to install our housing. We're gonna put a little bit of lubricant inside the well where it goes into the transfer pipe. We're gonna take our housing and go ahead and install it. I like to install all three bolts before tightening any one of them down. We're gonna start with our back one. Now, before you put these two on, we need to flip our bracket around and get it in the proper location. Now you're gonna to wanna to push the housing a little bit closer to up in its place. And I really recommend starting these bolts by hand. If it feels tight when you're twisting these in by hand, give the housing a little bit of a shake. That'll help relieve tension on the bolt and allow you to thread it in a little bit easier. Just like the rest of the job, we're gonna tighten these in stages. And when it's time to torque them down, torque them to 10 Newton meters. One, two, and three. Before we hook anything up, we need to reach down here and plug our coolant temp sensor in. That'll be an unhappy thing to forget to do. Put a little dielectric on all the junctions. Put our hoses on. Put our clamps back. And be sure to put that lower radiator hose back on. Now we're done with this portion here. We need to get the battery and the air box and everything put back in and go ahead and fill and bleed the cooling system. We need to go ahead and mix our coolant. The OE coolant does come concentrated, so we need to mix it 50% coolant with 50% distilled or what's even better is deionized water. 
you don't want to put straight water in, you don't want to put straight coolant in, and of course you want to make sure that you're using the correct coolant. We'll do our 50% water first, and we'll go ahead and pour our coolant in. Something I always recommend doing as well is marking it so that it's mixed. That way you never have to wonder, is this straight coolant or mix 50-50? Before we put coolant in it, I like to have the front of the car still up on the ramps or on the jack stands. That way, one, we can have our drip tray underneath it just in case it leaks. And two, that helps put the coolant ball at the highest point of the system, which will make bleeding the air out of the system quite a bit easier. Today, I'm gonna to also be test driving this coolant filling funnel, which actually isn't meant for this style of cooling system. It's meant for a standard radiator, but I think we have the setup to work just fine. I did some test fitment on the adapters, and it looks like this one is gonna be the one that fits in the coolant bowl pretty well. We'll take our funnel and set it in, and we will go ahead and fill it. While this is filling, this is a great time to look underneath the car and make sure you don't have any coolant coming out of the bottom. Once you have the coolant bowl pretty well filled up and you can feel a little bit of coolant in the upper radiator hose, it's time to start the car, let it warm up, and we also wanna turn the heat on. That'll help bleed the air out of the system just a little bit faster. Once your car has heat or the coolant level starts to rise in the bowl, put the coolant cap back on to avoid boiling over. Be sure to do a visual inspection and check for any leaks. Take it on a test drive, recheck the coolant level, but make sure not to open it when the cooling system is hot. If you're doing this for check engine light, clear the fault codes. And I always like to check the coolant level the next day to be sure you got all the air out. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Questions, comments, you know what to do. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up button. Always appreciate that. Don't forget to subscribe right here on YouTube and ding that notification bell. I'll put links down in the description to everything that we use today. If you want discounts to places like Eurowise, which we use their components today, Black Forest, Eastwood, Empty Knives, Sonic Tools, and more. Check out the crew membership program. Also have a Patreon if you want to throw some support to the show. Or hit that Amazon link down below. Buy what you're going to buy anyway, and that costs you zero extra bucks. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.